I think it is no secret at all that in Infinite Lagrange, frigates and destroyers are absolutely my favourite tonnages of ships, and amongst the frigates, the Reliat and the Mare Serenitatis are two of my favourites, both visually and in application on the battlefield. At long last, I have finally unlocked the third and final type of the Mare Serenitatis. I have spent a lot of the early time on this server playing around with these different variants, so that today I can talk to you about this ship in its fullest. We're going to do another blueprint breakdown today, looking at the Jupiter Industries Mare Serenitatis. All three types going under investigation. Let's jump right in. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another Blueprint Breakdown video for Infinite Lagrange, the series where I take a particular ship and we look at all of its different variations to talk about which ones are good, which ones are bad, how to best use them and how to cram them into your fleets if you're lucky enough to unlock them. Today, as I said, we're looking at the Mare Serenitatis. I love this ship to pieces. Hopefully by the end of this video, so will you. I have touched on this one in the past as well with its own unique video on the A-Type, um, but hey, we're going to roll it all together into one place here. If you enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for all things internet spaceships, and of course if you want to go the extra mile to help keep me doing what I do, I have a Redbubble store and a uh, Patreon page as well that you can pledge to support at. Otherwise, with all that said and done, let's jump right into the Mare Serenitatis, a Jupiter Industries frigate. It's named after, as most things are by Jupiter Industries, an actual area of space in our galaxy, or rather even in our solar system, and the Mare Serenitatis is actually pretty close to home. It is one of the mares, or seas, on our moon, so-called because they are massive craters that look like oceans, and the Mare Serenitatis, or the Sea of Serenity as it's often known, is a pretty big one, and here it is the name of the Heavy Frigate. The A-Type is the anti-ship type, and genuinely, I think if pressed to pick one ship that I love most in Infinite Lagrange, this is it. Let's have a look at why. Now, if we go across to the combat roles first of all, we have A for anti-ship capability, C for anti-aircraft, and B for siege. Now, A doesn't sound all that exciting, especially when you compare this to something like the Xeno Stinger, which is rated as S for anti-ship. But there's so much more to that, to the Mare Serenitatis, than just the flat numbers. Let's open this up and have a look. Equipped with the Mark I Eternal Polaris, which is already a badass name, projectile launching system for its component of t a complement of TR-360 torpedoes, it is able to mount long-range attacks on medium to large-sized ships. It has average survivability. It is a back row ship, which already is really cool, because it means most things are going to take the, f the hits before the Mare Serenitatis does, which actually, when it says average survivability, that's really not fair to this ship. They are very survivable because they just don't get shot at easily, especially if, like me, you have other frigates around in the front or medium row. Those are going to take all that firepower long before the Mare Serenitatis, and a couple of M470 supports are going to keep them alive pretty well. It says here, responsible for escorts, anti-missile and anti-aircraft tasks. It's mainly against medium ships and it uses torpedoes. The firepower starts off at a surprising 4,071, and with the way I've upgraded it, you can see this is now sitting at 6,336. Let's look at the propulsion system first of all. Despite being Jupiter Industries, it doesn't appear to have any, you know, any aggressive uh, evasion added in additionally, and there's nothing in its bonuses, either in the enhancements there, no additional eva uh, evasion. That's unusual for a Jupiter Industries ship, they tend to have evasion, but this one doesn't really need it because it's in the back row. Our armor systems, nothing really to write home here. There is that whole reduce the chance of being hit by missiles and torpedoes by 3% and 5% per level respectively. 15% and 25% reduction is nothing to be sniffed at. You're already back row, which means you're not going to get shot at frequently, but then if any missiles and torpedoes decide that they do want to take you out, well, yeah, this just makes it harder for them to hit you, makes you a little bit more survivable. You can see though, it's the kind of thing I've gone for last in the upgrade cycle here, because you just don't really need it, I find. Find. We then have an integrated cannon system as a sub-weapon. This just gives us a little bit of anti-aircraft firepower, shooting at missiles, torpedoes, and incoming fighters. I don't really rate this, it's not a necessary part of it. What you're doing with this ship when you build them is pumping everything straight into that Eternal Polaris system because, oh my goodness, this thing is pure filth. Let's actually have a look at its stats then to begin with. 
we have its projectile. It's aiming at large ships first and foremost, carriers, battle cruisers, and cruisers. Doesn't mean it's crap against anything smaller, but that uh, those are its primary targets. Why does it like those? Because it has the attack against systems. Oh yes, there is a probability of causing damage to the target system, and systems outside the attack sequence will not be targeted by weapons. It's only a low efficiency, but primary weapon and propulsion systems can be disabled by the Mare Serenitatis. Oh, primary weapon system. What's that? Your Eternal Storm Battlecruiser has a really nice Vigon Ion Cannon. Well, wouldn't it be a shame if my fleet of, a fleet of piddly little frigates completely disarmed that for you? Propulsion system? Oh, you've got one of those extra evasion things on your ship. Well, too bad that's now switched off as well, and now everything's doing more damage. Yeah, that's really nice just to start with, plus the fact that again, 6,336 damage, 5,436 just from this weapon. And the interesting part of this is that it has the concentrate fire strategy. That sinks all weapons in the system with the primary weapon to focus fire on one single target. That means all the cannons stop shooting at aircraft and they start shooting at the target instead. So you may want to upgrade those cannons later on just to get that little bit of extra DPM out of the Mare Serenitatis Heavy. For the most part though, this is just a really nice strategy. There are some, like the Taurus and that, that basically when you go to fire it turns off the other weapon systems to give a boost to the main one. This one sinks them, so it keeps your st uh, straight up damage, but rather than that damage being split ab amongst multiple targets, it's all on the one. We then have a 50% crit damage chance, which is just filth. That's 6,000 damage, well, 5,436 damage already. Then you can do an additional 50% crit damage on that, which again, when that starts hitting things like weapon systems and propulsion systems, is a lot of damage. We then bump up the damage with increase on missile torpedo damage and weapon system cooldown. Basically, I tend to go straight for the sympathetic detonation, then I take on the concentrate fire, and then I start pulling these ones up fairly equally. There is also a missile hit rate and torpedo hit rate. I've honestly never found this to be overly useful. I have swapped out uh, some of the damaging ones for this instead, and the DPM just seems to be lower every time. They hit more frequently, I guess, but the loss in damage just isn't enough. They hit pretty well for the most part, as it is. You've got also the uh, reduce the chances of torpedoes being intercepted by 6%. There have been times when I've gone up against fleets that have heavy torpedo interception. This is a useful skill in those scenarios, 30% um, reduction to torpedoes being intercepted is really quite nice, can't sniff at that. The siege damage, nah, situational, I've personally never used it because I'd rather just build a few Mare Nubiums and send those in instead, but if you are absolutely you know, dedicated to using this in a siege, the damage options there, but hey, 30% on top of 1,631, just it, to me that ain't really worth it. What makes this ship so powerful is that it has a nice target priority to hit the big stuff first, it has the capability of disarming their weaponry and their propulsion systems, and with that crit damage it actually does a lot of firepower. I was really impressed with this, I was very excited to see the Type B, which I unlocked earlier this week, uh, yeah, earlier this week. Let's talk about that one. The Mare Serenitatis B-Type is the missile frigate, and the description gives this as a main weapon remodded into bilateral missile launch nests capable of launching a barrage of assault missiles to targets in the back row. It can also deal effective damage against small ships. Back row against small ships. So we've still got that same survivability from the previous Mare Serenitatis. This is a back row ship. It doesn't have anything in the way of additional evasion again, um, and just cruising speed and warp, uh, warp speed in the basics there, which yeah, you don't really need armor. Very much the same story as before. If we look at the combat roles, we've only got B for anti-ship. We've gone down to C anti-aircraft and C on siege, which kind of begs the question, what is the point in this, right? And I'm a little disappointed if I'm being completely honest. Fully upgraded, I'm still only getting 5,654 compared to 6,336. And if we go into that Eternal Polaris changed system here, you'll see that it just doesn't have quite the same diff you know, same powers. Projectile against small ships, so it is prioritizing destroyers and frigates before going for carriers, battle cruisers, and cruisers, um, which I guess is probably why you would use this if you're going up against fleets that have destroyers and frigates and a couple of battle cruisers, and you've got other things taking out the cruisers and battle cruisers. You don't really want Mare Serenitatis shooting at that. You want something that's taking out the destroyers. 
I guess that's where this one comes in useful, but if we look at its enhancements, we're sinking all main weapons in the system again, as we saw before. We've then got straight up uh, damage, missile torpedo damage, um, along with cooldown. We've got hit missile hit rate, um, all in there again. It, it's, it's very generic is what I would say. The Mare Serenitatis Missile Frigate is a very generic early game ship, and ultimately, I just find that building the standard Heavy Frigate does the job better, and I don't have to rebuild them later. I'm not going to say this is a bad ship. It's not. It's niche. I think if you want a ship that is going to be taking out um, destroyers and frigates as priority, then the Missile Frigate is going to be better for you than the standard Heavy Frigate. But it's rare that you're going to ever encounter that situation. Most of the time, you're going to be quite happy that those Mare Serenitatis are taking out those big heavy ships first, and then they will just continue to pound into dust anything in front of them. The whole line that the missiles target ships in the back row, it, they don't specifically target ships in the back row, they're just missiles. Missiles work on strict target priority, which means they will fire at all of, you know, if they've got, say, destroyer priority, once all the destroyers in the front row are dead, they'll move to destroyers in the second row, then they'll move to destroyers in the rear row, whereas direct fire weapons will go primarily after destroyers in the front row, then they'll have to wait until the front row is cleared before they primarily go after destroyers destroyers in the middle row, then they'll start shooting other ships in the middle row before eventually moving to the back row and working down the priority list there. Missiles go specifically for the priority. They will take out all of the destroyers in a fleet first, then go to all of the frigates in the fleet, and then work their way down the priority list like that, regardless of what row they're in. Um, so there's no real difference there between the anti-ship type and the missile type, just that the missile type has overall lower DPM um, and a, a different target priority. If we have a look at the integrated cannon system, when I can actually tap on it, again, nothing overly special here. It's primarily anti-air and anti-missile, which is quite nice to have. And if you do go for that, of course, almost obligatory upgrade of the concentrate fire periodically, it is taking all of the DPM from all of your weapons um, and focusing it on the target. So rather than just the 4,754 there for the supernova, it is going to be the full 5,654 while that strategy is active. And I don't know. I don't hate this ship. I've been using it a lot recently. But as you can see, active service, 0 out of 10. I took them out of active service because I found that the standard anti-ship type was working. And for me, having Reliat Stealths, I'd rather build the Reliat Stealths than the missile types. But... If you're looking for something to go after cruise, uh, frigates and destroyers with its missiles as a priority, this is a solid ship, and I, I can't diss it for that. Finally then, we come to the Mare Serenitatis C-Type, the anti-aircraft frigate, and this is where things get a little bit dodgy. So, obviously if we open up, again it says that main weapon is modified to bilateral anti-aircraft missile launch nests capable of launching repeat attacks on anti-aircraft weapons. Um, it's back row, it's based against aircraft, you can kind of already see where this ship is going. C on anti-ship capability. A on anti-aircraft capability, and it is a whopping amount of damage, 4,267 as basic, that's not upgraded. Again, we have no evasion, nothing in, you know exciting in the armor or in the propulsion system, so we're going to jump straight into the main weapon system. Upgrades are the same across all of these, you're using just your missile uh, there for those and cannons otherwise. Now here, Here's where things get interesting. So first of all, anti-aircraft support. All weapon systems lock onto enemy aircraft in the nearby row and launch attacks. This is an absolute necessity if you are running this ship. That is what you're going to be wanting to do. This does ultimately target uh, aircraft directly, but it's done as a counter-attack. So it's waiting for aircraft to attack the Mare Serenitatis first, then it fires back. That strategy means that you can skip that hole attacking you, and you wait until they are just in the row, and then you will start to fire as well. Both of the weapon we uh, weapons on this ship do that. You need to have that anti-aircraft support up and running ASAP on this. I would basically say if you haven't got that running, it's kind of pointless building this ship because it only defends itself. If you have the anti-aircraft uh, air support, it will shoot at everything that is attacking the same row. So anything that attacks a back row ship will get shot at by the Mare Serenitatis. After this, again, you've got things like your 10% crit damage, you've got missile interception reduction, I don't find this one particularly useful. Straight up damage and cooldown is what I'd go for here. 
um, followed by standard hit rate there. Basically, get that anti-aircraft support, go crit, go hit, and then boost your damage up from there. And it will. It will rip through enemy aircraft and fighters and bombers and that that come into your back row, but only if they come into your back row, which means most people still massively prefer to use anti-aircraft fighters like the Spore or the Sandrake, um, because those just overall do a better job. Again, the cross-integrated cannon system, if we look at this, it's hit rate against fighters and corvettes, um, uh, intercepting incoming missiles, that kind of thing. This is a very defensive frigate. It sits in the back row and it just protects everything else from incoming missiles and incoming aircraft. There's really nothing overly exciting to say about this one. If it's your only anti-aircraft option or you've got a load of stuff in the back row that you're finding is getting heavily targeted by uh, enemy aircraft, this is a valid option. Just for most people, they're going to rather be running things like spores or sand drakes um, out of the uh, out of carriers as well, because then they still do good damage against everything else as well. Um, there's, there's there's that moment where all of your spores or your CT. 800s or whatever and um, those have all finished taking out the aircraft at which point they go against the enemy fleet with that not inconsiderable firepower this you're only targeting stuff against the back row um, and only targeting fighters that, and aircraft that enter the back row if they're not targeting the back row then you're not shooting at them and once everything's all the aircraft are dead it's anti-ship firepower is so pitiful that it's just i don't know I don't know. I think aircraft work better in this role, but it's interesting to see that you can run a full fleet of 30 Mare Serenitatis and it will actually do really quite well, especially if you put something in the front row that has high evasion like, I don't know, Carillion Recons or the Carillion Special type, because the front row is going to be taking all the damage and just avoiding and these guys sit in the back row and just take no shots at all. I love the Mare Serenitatis, I do enjoy all three types, but for me, my favourite will always sit on the anti-ship type. It is just such a brutally powerful ship, I love it to pieces. If you are lucky enough to unlock that blueprint, build them. Build them, they will see you right the way through to end game on any server you are on. Build them, dump all of the enhancement points into them that you can. You'll see I got these to gold very, very quickly. I do actually need to improve that and push it up a little bit higher so that I can build multiple different types of these. This will probably be the first frigate that I actually push to a full um, tech point upgrade of 200 because I just love them that much. Anyway, folks, those are my th thoughts and opinions on the Mare Serenitatis frigates. Please let me know yours in the comment section down below. If you're enjoying my Infinite Lagrange videos, let me know. If you've got feedback or ideas that you'd like me to do for Infinite Lagrange, again, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Otherwise, folks, thank you for tuning in and watching right the way through to the end here. Happy sailing, and see you in Infinite Lagrange! <laughs>